All in a day's work, guys. All in a day's work. And in case you were wondering, these are not the most interesting parts of this video. Battle starts. Hello, guys, and welcome to World of Warships with Fulefu. I've got an excellent replay for you today of my tier 8 Russian destroyer, the Tashkent. The replay consists of 20 minutes of constant exciting action and I hope it will not only entertain you but also teach you a thing or two about how to play the Tashkent to its fullest potential. This is a tier 8 match, but there are only 4 tier 8 ships on the enemy team. Also, similar to my previous Tashkent replay, I am the only destroyer on my team, as opposed to 3 destroyers which were placed in the enemy team. And without further ado, let's move on to the match. I spawn next to the sea cap. And knowing that the biggest weakness, in my opinion, of the Russian destroyers is their slightly sluggish maneuverability compared to, when compared to the American or Japanese destroyers, I realized that going straight into sea might be a suicide run. Therefore, I choose the side option, going between the islands and hoping to spot some enemies in the process to give me a better idea of what to expect. I bounced the shell from the turpets, which always feels nice, and I managed to set it on fire. I realized that there may be more ships coming into my right side if I pop smoke, and move in swiftly into the canal between the islands. There's an enemy Yorkin coming, and a Pensacola slightly further in the back. And I'm constantly being spotted, not only by an aircraft, but also by ship, therefore there must be a destroyer somewhere right in front of me. Now I'm moving into sea and suddenly an enemy Mutsuki shows up and his torpedoes are already, already in the water. I have no chance of trying to avoid them in any other way than just going between them. Fortunately, I managed to dodge both of them and I know now that I'm safe from any other torpedo launches from that enemy destroyer. I don't hesitate to unleash my 130mm guns on him and do very short work of him with the help of the two cruisers in the north. I quickly look around and I see the enemy turbids and the York coming in at really short ranges and I realize that my only chance of surviving is to get myself turned around and avoiding contact with them as my torpedo range is only four kilometers i cannot deter the turpids from attacking me with a torpedo launch therefore as quickly as i can i maneuver away from the view i pop the engine boost consumable but uh, realize that i still need to back up a little bit otherwise i'll get stuck on the rocks The only thing that saves me is the fact that they are engaging the, the allied Furutaka who got himself in a really tight spot there. I slow down again, wondering if I should stay in the cap and prevent them from capping. But I get spotted by an enemy aircraft and I realize that staying here is asking for trouble. The enemy team has taken the lead. The area to the south seems to be clear from enemies. Therefore I quickly realize that there is a chance I could create an ambush. Most of my team is coming in from the north, therefore I realize that the enemies who occupy the sea cap will most likely try to flee to the south. I'm spotted again 
but I don't worry about it too much as I'm pretty sure that both the enemy turpits and the York are too busy fighting my allies. The North did notice that I'm sneaking up behind them. The enemy turpit is closer to me, therefore he becomes my primary target. And you will notice that I will launch my torpedoes from more than 4 kilometers away. This is not a mistake, I knew what I was doing. The turpit is moving towards me and I was counting on him closing the distance fast enough to stray within my torpedoes range. first kill. Now nothing stands between me and my team capping the C cap and moving on to engaging the rest of the enemy team. Now I have to do some idle sailing before uh, anything else happens and I thought I would use that time to tell you about about my destroyer setup. The gun range is 13.9 kilometers and that includes the gun range upgrade and my captain's range perk. The torpedo range is 4 kilometers as I have the stock ones and I think I'm actually going to keep them because they suit my playstyle a bit better than the 8 kilometer ones. The speed of this uh, ship is just amazing. I think I said it before but I want to uh, say it again. Uh, it's uh, 42.8 knots, which means that with the engine boost consumable, I can take it up to 46.2 knots. And this is just awesome, I can outrun most torpedoes that any torpedo bomber can drop at me. The rudder shift time, I managed to take it down to 4.8 seconds. And that is achieved by uh, buying the, the second hull. I also chose to use the steering gears modification 2 in the upgrades. And that shaves out another 20% of the rather shift time. And I believe this is very important because I believe that this is the weakness of this Russian destroyer. I'm also using the concealment system modification 1 which takes off 10% uh, uh, of my detectability and that takes my surf surface detectability range to 8.2 kilometers. I still don't have the fifth captain's perk which would take off another 10% uh, but I do use the camouflage that takes another 3% off so that's how I managed to take it down to 8.2 kilometers. A quick look at the map tells me that the majority of the enemy team must be either around the A or north from the A cap. After scanning the bottom right qu quarter of the map and seeing that there are no enemies there, I move on to the B cap. Also noticing that most of the enemy team are moving away. So I'm almost finished with the B-Cup when I get spotted by the enemy dive bombers and it seems that they are heading towards me. Our team has taken the lead. Fortunately, they don't hit me and to my surprise they move north. Now that really surprised me as I was expecting them to go south or uh, the west where I was expecting to see the enemy carrier, but that's not the case. And lo and behold, here's the carrier, and now I understand why those empty bombers were going that way. The carrier captain is very smart and he was trying to misinform me as to his whereabouts. I align my guns and start shooting away, scoring a citadel hit on my first HE volley. Now, the range of my guns is 
way over 13 kilometers with the captain's pack, therefore I choose to stop and not chase the carrier um, in favor of being able to use all of my turrets and doing a quick job out of killing him. As soon as I set the carrier on fire, I switch to armor piercing rounds. Mostly out of curiosity, I just want to see how easy it is going to be to score citadel hits with those 130mm cannons. The first few volleys do some damage, but nothing spectacular. Then suddenly I get five citadel hits in one volley. That finishes off the ranger with one more citadel and I move on to um, securing the A cap, expecting the torpedo bombers that are incoming right now to still do an automatic drop on me. Which just, which just proves to me that the carrier captain was a really skilled captain, he really knew what he was doing. So, so far we We've already got 2 kills, 7 citadel hits, and we've managed to even kill 8 planes. I see 2 cruisers incoming in my position. Um, I want to cut the A cap first, therefore I pop smoke and engage in my favorite way of engaging enemy ships in any destroyer that I play. The, the, the fighter squadrons above me keep on spotting the Pensacola for me and the Pensacola cannot see me even though I'm only 6.3 kilometers away. Armor piercing shells loaded and I proceed to align myself to score citadel hits on the Pensacola even though as you can see it's not entirely necessary even normal penetrating hits do a lot of damage to this ship. Look, 4,000 in one volley. And now one more volley. And I score. My third kill. By now the A cap is already secured. We control all three caps and I realize that my next target should be the enemy turpets who is attempting to regain control of b -cap. As I'm turning around, I notice a Pesacola which is uh, sailing away about 10 kilometers away from me. And I shoot two opportunistic volleys in its general direction, scoring a couple of hits and setting it on fire. Our victory is in sight. Now the Pensacola is within my gun range and is on low health, therefore I decide that it would make sense to try to at least keep on decapping while it tries to steal the cap from us. Firing at maximum distance, first volley. But the next ones are really scoring hits. And I don't really plan to kill the Pensacola, I just want to keep decapping long enough to make sure that the B cap stays in our possession. But as it turns out, I'm doing much more damage than expected. And the Pensacola crumbles. Now I quickly look at the score and I realize that we are 
most likely going to win quickly and wonder if it would make sense to do a suicide run on the Colorado. So I'm heading towards that island, not sure which way I should go around it to engage that Colorado. I slow down. This is the reason why I slow down. I, I want to be sure that I'm choosing the right direction and I use the torpedo indicator to help me gauge which way the Colorado is going. And uh, it's by now it's pretty clear that the Colorado wants to engage the Atago that is behind me. Therefore, it's cutting across between those two islands to be able to meet it on the other side not knowing that it's sailing right into my trap. I slow down, pop smoke, just in case my torpedo run was unsuccessful and I had to escape. Patience is the key here. First volley, second, and the third one white just in case. Now, this is the moment the Colorado realizes that there is something wrong slows down and starts turning but it's already too late and his mistake gives me the confederate board and my third kill now this was an excellent game for me as you can see I managed to land 143 hits on target which gave me 5 incapacitations and managed to set the enemy ships on fire four times. I also scored eight citadel hits out of which seven landed on the enemy carrier, total of seven torpedo hits, and I even managed to shoot down nine enemy airplanes, which is amazing. The icing on the cake is the high caliber and of course the confederate award that game gave me 400,000 credits and 5,600 experience points out of which two and a half thousand was base experience now this will be no surprise to you uh, that i dealt a huge amount of damage in this game 32,000 with the armor piercing rounds 35 with the high explosive those seven torpedo hits gave me 65,000 points of damage if i wasn't running a premium account this monster of a game would have given me 200,000 of pure profit after all the repairs and refits but since I do have a premium account, I managed to clear 340,000 profit. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like down below. It really helps the channel out and gives me motivation to work harder at enhancing the content. Also, if you have any comments, questions or advice, uh, leave it in the comments section down below. I'll be happy to read anything that you've got to say. Also, please subscribe if you'd like to see more.